With me is uh, Paolo Tasca, he's the director of the Center for Black Blockchain Technologies at the University of London. Uh, Mr. Tasca, uh, what exactly is your area of research? Mm -hmm. So, um, where the center uh, comprises uh, more than at the moment 35 different scientists, uh, they cover uh, aspects of cryptography, aspects of information securities, aspects of uh, uh, network uh, securities, aspects of economics, law regulation. So, we have we are covering different areas that are uh, impacting the blockchain technologies. In my case, uh, I'm a, uh, personally a, an economist uh, with uh, with uh, a strong uh, connection with uh, um, physicists, and uh, I'm, I'm working more on the network aspects, economic network aspects of the Bitcoin economy, but not only Bitcoin. Okay, so you you look at everything. That blockchain this, concerns. Yes. So blockchain concerns everything. Yes, it's a complex matter. Let's. What do you think that will happen in the next few years? Well, what? Give me an outline of the future. Well, uh, you think about the uh, six uh, six years ago at the beginning, uh, and you you went online and you see the companies that were uh, accepting Bitcoin. There were some uh, some. Uh, some companies selling alpaca socks, some other strange things, and uh, and it uh, was very naive uh, economy. And after five, six years, you look now at the, at the web and you see who is using uh, blockchain, Bitcoin. You have uh, names like Nasdaq, you have names like Swift, you have names like, uh, um, I don't know, Bank of England, they are experimenting. Uh, major central banks and private banks are working on this. So in five years, six years, the evolution of this kind of uh, technology is uh, tremendous. So I think that in the next five years, uh, we don't we don't yet uh, understand where we are going to go, but uh, it will be another for the jump uh, like that. What are your thoughts on that? Give me an outline, please. Just what, what are your fantasies concerning well, I blockchain? Think, I think that uh, um, it is uh, um, it is very likely that uh, this type of technologies will drive us toward uh, social economic systems that will be very fragmented, so um, that will be very uh, tailored and designed according to the different community needs. And so you will see a lot of uh, brand currencies, as I, I call that you they will serve different community needs of different uh, uh, incentives. And uh, this could be a private currency or public currencies. And then you will have multi-currency system that will allow us as end users to exchange uh, these different uh, the different currencies among each other in a type of uh, um, a, a, car a currency competitions environment. This is the currency aspect. But then you have other type of blockchain technologies. You have the application stacks like Ethereum, like um, uh, Aries, mm. and then you have the asset sensory technologies like uh, uh, Ripple or Stellar. All these things are layers on the top of the, of the, of the infrastructure and therefore multiple new uh, uh, products uh, and services uh, and business model will emerge that we don't know yet. It's like that you asked me a question back to the 90s, uh, what will be the next years uh, with the internet? Uh, I, I cannot answer that uh, there will be Google, there will be uh, Amazon, there will be companies like Facebook uh, with uh, one, more than one billion uh, market capitalization. So these are the things that we are going to face in the next years. Uh, you also look at uh, the impact of the blockchain socially. Uh, uh, that, that concerns the end users, that concerns consumers like me. Yeah. So what will be the impact of the blockchain for me, for end users, consumers? Yeah, so uh, I think the, the, the blockchain is not a panacea that can solve all the problems that we have in our society. It is a good technology to solve, uh, to, uh, to, to, to replace uh, uh, the uh, legacy systems uh, uh, that can be improved in terms of uh, automatism. So whenever there is a, a notarization, whenever there is an intermediary layer, whenever there is a routine that is, uh, can be replaced, this technology can, uh, can be used. And therefore for an end users, you, uh, you, this kind of technology will, 
will basically uh, facilitate your life. So it will be much easier, much faster to get some uh, permissions, to get access to some uh, 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 service, uh, to get uh, uh, a transfer of uh, properties, uh, to get uh, uh, more interoperable uh, um, uh, devices. Uh, talking about, I think about Internet of Things. Uh, so it will, it will be basically a, a life that will be uh, basically at the fingerprint. Uh, uh, everything will be done uh, very, very easily with a mobile phone, without the needs of uh, paperwork, uh, without the need of uh, queuing uh, for a lot of time. And this is a combination between blockchain, but also big data analytics and other type of technology. Artificial intelligence will play an important role also. So, uh, what will happen to banks? Well, banks. <laughs> End of uh, banks. So banks. Different uh, banks. Well, yes. Uh, you know, when with the emergence of internet uh, uh, and the and the commercializations of internet, uh, uh, back to the 90s, you you saw the uh, also the um, new uh, new players entering the markets, and these new players were basically the online bank system without the brick and mortar mm -hmm. uh, branch, and the, this type of new business model emerged because of the internet. I think that. Uh, Banking and money uh, are two type of processes that will remain, but they will be transformed completely. So uh, maybe new players will come in, and a new way of doing banking, a new way of uh, transferring money will be uh, will be used, will, be, will emerge. So uh, I'm not expecting that banking or banks will disappear. I'm expecting that uh, or money will disappear. No, I'm expecting that. The way we, we do banking now and the way we, we consider money now will be completely different tomorrow. So cashless society uh, is a concept that, uh, for example, has been used since centuries ago, but uh, we now really have the technology and, uh, and, uh, and uh, this is, uh, of course, the trend. Uh, mm -mm. You work for Deutsche Bank? Deutsche Bundesbank uh, yep. for more than two years. Yes. Yeah. So, what do you think the regulators? Uh, what is the role of the regulators in in, in, in the, the upcoming blockchain revolution, which is which you predict? <laughs> what, uh, are they up to speed? So the, the regulators uh, uh, are facing an interesting uh, battle because uh, this type of technology uh, need a. Uh, from one side to be uh, to be understood and regulated. Uh, if you if you look at the last uh, uh, PSD2, uh, which is the uh, directive on the payment service payment service directive, they they don't mention uh, Bitcoin, they don't mention digital currency, they don't mention uh, blockchain. So what does that they, tell you? This they... tell me that basically that uh, this is uh, uh, still up to come. Mm. So they are talking about uh, 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 um, banking that need to open their APIs to uh, third parties, but they are not talking about digital wallets. They are not talking about uh, other means of payment that are uh, uh, basically allowed by this, uh, this technology. This is one aspect. The second aspect for regulated, so this one, the regulation, so the risk and that they should step into this subject more intensively. Mm. So uh, I would expect that they should coordinate uh, uh, more on these aspects and uh, uh, promote uh, uh, a, 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 a soft regulations, uh, not to see for like competitions, uh, at the same time also to prevent uh, cyber or, 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 or this new type of risk that are emerging. This is the one aspect. The second aspect for regulation is, uh, is the positive aspect because they can benefit from this type of technology. Imagine that uh, everything will be put uh, as an accounting system mm. on the ledger, then they don't need uh, uh, to rely on the documentation that the banks will provide them. In terms of banking supervision, everything will be mm. uh, yeah. automatic. Uh, this is one thing. So there are many studies now emerging about also a uh, new type of uh, central bank uh, digital currencies. We have done a study also at the University College London with a, with a, with a new currency called RS coin. Uh, some colleagues of mine, they have developed collaboration with the Bank of England, this type of new protocol, which will uh, have the potential to, to give the control of the monetary policy back to the central bank, among the other things. 
And uh, uh, among the other positive aspects, the central banks can also use this type of technology to, to go below the so-called zero low bound. And the zero low bound, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this is a mental limit uh, attached to the concept of cash. Whenever you have cash in your pocket, uh, you cannot have a zero ne a negative interest rate. Whenever you go back to, to the bank, uh, after 100 years, they will give you back the same coins or the same cash. Now, in a period where the economy is slowing down and you need to boost it, uh, the, um, the, the central banks need to look uh, into um, uh, alternative uh, uh, or uh, um, monetary policies. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, this type of technology could help them to mm -hmm. develop new tools. Mm. Uh, so the, uh, central banks, uh, regulators, uh, they will know everything. Blockchain is, here you have the blockchain, you can see everything. Is that the reason that uh, a country like Switzerland is not very positive about the blockchain? Well, <clears throat> uh, you know, um, the, it is always is a, is a, is a complex, as I say, it is a complex uh, subject that uh, involves different stakeholders. You know, um, um, whenever you whenever you put something on the ledger, uh, you should have uh, basically uh, a, a common a common project together with the different stakeholders that uh, uh, want uh, or to share the content that is in the ledger, and therefore. Um, mm, Whenever a government uh, want to uh, want to put an uh, accounting system in the ledger, which involve uh, 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 information uh, 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 that are uh, usually kept in, in a separate ledgers, this means that there is there is a there is a trade-off between uh, um, uh, um, accountability or um, uh, um, Reconciliations of the data and also privacy of the data, privacy, and therefore uh, there is a. The, it's not clear the answer, so mm. it depend on the pressures. There is always there are the different incentives in this in this respect. Therefore, um, I think and I hope that uh, uh, this type of technology, if it is used uh, at the more um, a larger scope, at the more uh, global uh, scale. Uh, need to be basically uh, designed together with different the different stakeholders. Otherwise, it will uh, be not uh, effective. And the and the and the and the and the type of design that we see will be in the solution of the of the results of the different uh, of the dialogue mm -hmm. among the different stakeholders. Thank you very much. Welcome.